Cool. Um, hi, everyone. It's so great to see um, so many of your names on my screen. Um, so for those of you who don't know that are here in the presentation today, my name is Emily um, and I served at Sequoia Riverlands Trust, which is based out of Visalia and Tulare County in the San Joaquin Valley. I am currently calling from Maine um, because about two months ago, almost two months, I started a new role um, with a land trust called Maine Farmland Trust. Um, this land trust works with farmers throughout the state of Maine, um, and I wouldn't have this role without my experience as a Grizzly Corps Fellow. Um, so that being said, I left the program a little early, um, but after talking through with my mentor and site supervisor, Ben Munger, um, and also the Grizzly Corps staff, um, everyone was really supportive of my next move. Um, and like I said before, I sounds cheesy, but I really couldn't have done it without um, this service term. Um, so with that being said, let's get into it. Um, so I was working uh, in the rangelands in San Joaquin Valley in the foothills of the Sierra mostly, uh, working with beef cattle ranchers and drought, as I'm sure it was for most of you, uh, was usually the conversation topic. Um, so just a quick run through of what I'm going to talk about. I want to introduce you guys to the organization. What is Sequoia Riverlands Trust? Um, what is a land trust? And also what was my role as a fellow um, when I came into this role working with SRT? Uh, what was the expectation of my service? And also why I chose Grizzly Corps and how my Grizzly Corps service has played into my role that I have now and my future in either land conservation or something along those lines. This picture here is one of my favorites um, down in the corner. I'm actually, you can see the car mirror. I'm riding in a truck back from a branding. There is a photo um, from a branding in this presentation. I'll tell you guys when it's coming up. Um, there's a calf that's being roped off the back of a horse. It's not terribly graphic, but I'll give you a heads up if you would, don't want to see that. And I'll tell you when it's gone. So, all right. So what is SRT? Like I said, SRT is based out of Visalia in Tulare County. Um, it stands for Sequoia Riverlands Trust. Uh, this is actually a new mission. So SRT is in this ongoing period um, of transition where uh, the organization, we're figuring out um, how we want to act, um, or I guess I should say they, as I'm <laughs> not on the team anymore, but how they want to act in the space and with the lands um, and the people whose livelihoods are tied to them. So the mission, our mission is to conserve the lands and waters of California's heartland. Um, and I'd like to zoom in uh, to what was specific in my work is working with ranchers. So how does SRT work with ranchers? Um, there are conservation easements and this will link into a quick explanation of what a land trust is. So a land trust is an organization that holds land in conservation through legal agreements called easements. Um, and landowners can sign easements that are eternal. Um, they apply to the land forever, even through sales on passing on different operations. And these easements uh, make it so usually development can't happen um, and they stay in agricultural production. However, the interactions that I had with ranchers um, were usually happening through grazing leases. So just as you would lease an apartment, SRT will lease out um, land that they own outright um, in preserves to ranchers that want to graze on these properties. And before I move on, um, I'll show you guys this little photo. This was from a really delicious Mediterranean spread that we put together. This was my kind of going away, which it's crazy that it was, yeah, like two months ago now. Um, but I just feel overjoyed by how much support um, and hospitality uh, I got from my host organization. Uh, it definitely fueled my work. Oh, whoops, I'm trying to go to the next slide. Okay, so I started talking about preserves. Like I said, these are properties that SRT owns. Um, a couple of them are open to the public. Um, so folks that live in these areas can go hike around. There are little stars um, next to the preserves that um, have the grazing leases on them that I worked with. Um, most notably, I worked with Blue Oak Ranch, which was in Springville, and I worked with Homer Ranch, um, which was in Woodlake. Both are in the foothills of the Sierra. Um, the top photo here is from um, 
blue oak and the bottom one, which is another one of my favorite shots is from a section of the Homer Preserve that's called the Upper Avery um, that I would go visit with uh, one of the ranchers, Jody Fuller, who I developed a pretty close relationship with. And she would zoom me up there in her UTV and we'd take a look at the poppies. All right, so to break down my service, I break it down into three parts, even though they're all very interconnected. Um, the first is rangeland monitoring. Um, so I was using an application called Land PKS, which stands for Potential Knowledge System, that is tracking essentially how much bare ground um, is in a 100 foot square square, I was going to say radius, but I guess it is a square plot, what have you. Um, and there are all sorts of different things that are measured uh, in terms of annual versus perennial um, height, density uh, with the vegetation that's on the ground. The big question is how much ground cover there is. Um, the second thing that was probably my biggest um, emotional and personal takeaway from my service uh, were the rancher partnerships that I was able to make. And the third part that I hold very close to my heart because I really value being out um, and doing manual labor uh, and building things with my hands was working with the SRT preserve infrastructure um, with the guidance from my mentor and uh, the many holes in my uh, pants and shirts to prove it from barbed wire. All right, so a little bit more in Ridgeland monitoring. As I said, I used Land PKS. And the great thing about Land PKS is there's a mobile app um, that you can either use on an iPad, like I am here with high school students, or on a phone. Um, and it's a really intuitive platform that breaks down what it looks like to make rangeland observations, ground cover observations, and catalog them. It was actually developed for people that can't read and write um, for accessibility um, and giving that agency and power of being able to monitor your lands to folks um, regardless of their um, background. So the high school students that I worked with were mostly out of a program through SRT called Earth Academy. Um, SRT has a really robust education program. The people um, that work in the education program, Devin, Sam, um, Sneha, and Bud are rock stars and they are doing so much for the youth and our communities. Um, Earth Academy is a year long, um, I guess I call it an internship. It's a program that high school students can do where they can have a specific ecological focus in these lands that they've grown up in um, for most of their lives, but maybe they're looking um, at the land and a new perspective to the program. And I worked really closely with the students in both the soil health and the rangeland monitoring lessons. Um, so the big takeaway from rangeland monitoring, as I've said before, and I have it bolded here, is ground cover. Um, I started this presentation with talking about drought. A uh, big takeaway for the students, for conversations that I have with ranchers, is the importance of ground cover. Um, and what do I mean by ground cover? I'm talking about plants that are rooted in the ground and also plants that maybe are dried up and create a mulch or a litter that are able to um, retain moisture and keep water in the ground um, as much as possible, especially with the low rainfall um, and soils that, um, because of different grazing practices, just aren't as set up to absorb uh, water when they can. Um, just gonna skip forward. Moving on to working with ranchers, as I said before, um, this was the most challenging and also the most rewarding part of the service. Um, when I first came into this role, or even before I came in, when I interviewed with Ben, we talked about how um, one of the capacity goals or whatever word you wanna put on it um, that Ben was hoping to get of having a Grizzly Corps fellow and also having a previous fellow before me, uh, Alexis, that did incredible work, is increasing SRT's capacity to connect with ranchers. Um, the ranchers that graze on the preserves are huge in the preserve management. Um, and SRT is doing great work. Um, there's also a lot of room for SRT to connect further with the people that are running the cows on these working rangelands. Um, so one of my personal goals and also one of the goals that I had to increase capacity within the organization was how can ranchers better, inf better inform our land conservation goals? And that's a huge thing to tackle. Um, and I found that in 
you know, I started with saying that this is challenging um, because, you know, politics and social differences aside, um, asking someone to step away from their day to day and give you their perspective as to how your own um, as an organization land management can be better, uh, it takes trust um, and it takes, you know, their time to step aside and give you their point of view. Um, so I spent a lot of time specifically with this woman, Jody, who actually um, cold called me the other day and we chatted for a while. So I'm still keeping in touch with her, which is awesome, even though I'm not physically there. Um, but I rode around with her in her ATV for hours um, and I went to her brandings. Oh, shoot. I was going to tell you guys about the cow. I'm so sorry. Well, there's the cow and the branding. I'm sorry if that um, is hard for you to see. Uh, it is a part of beef ranching um, and it's a part of how the beef industry works. Um, I can talk more about it uh, if people want to know, but if not, that's fine. Anyway, um, and Jody was gracious enough to invite me into her community and give me her um, perspective, everything from, you know, the hard logistics of her pasture rotations to the more, um, I don't know, con conceptual, um, morals that she has when it comes to uh, managing her land. Uh, and this also leads into the second question that was a big part of my service is these relationships, how can we make them reciprocal? So it's not that we're just taking and asking um, from these folks that are managing the land um, day to day with their ranching operations, but what else can we give to them? Um, and honestly, a lot of what I gave was in labor, um, but it was received well and needed. Um, and I also had a lot of fun out of it. So. All right, I call this section my barbed wire chronicles. Um, I got really familiar with coils and uncoiled and pieces and jumbles of barbed wire. Um, and I'm so glad that I did because I learned how to build things. Um, one of the projects that I worked with with Ben is there were these um, old redwood posts that were in the existing fence. And I took them all down and I took all the rusty barbed wire down and then we use those posts to build a new fence brace which is pictured on the left um, so repurposing this wood that you know was milled i don't know if i get the number wrong but i'm sorry but maybe like 100 years ago 100 plus years ago yeah i there's something that is really beautiful about that and to be able to repurpose something in a project that was protecting um, a more fragile part of the local ecosystem um, a spring area and also uh, water trough infrastructure from um, cattle grazing. Um, there is something that I feel really thankful to participate in that and be able to do with my with my hands. Um, there were also uh, different planting programs that I took uh, part in with planting uh, native perennials on different parts of our preserves. And then this isn't barbed wire, but it's tools nonetheless. Um, this picture on the right is me making part of an artificial burrowing mound, burrowing owl mound um, that Ben and I and some other folks at SRT went out um, into the Antelope Valley and uh, which is, I don't know, just northwest of the Mojave. Um, we dug holes and put those in there and that will be um, habitat for burrowing owls. Um, so my barbed wire chronicles per se really connected me to um, different habitats, um, different ways of thinking about different habitats that I don't think I would have otherwise. And I see that I'm running close to time, so I'm going to wrap this up. So I serve with Grizzly Corps. Okay, I don't want to go into the whole tangent um, in the interest of time, but this picture on the right is from um, a creek that experienced this crazy washout event um, from the sequoia grove that was upstream. Um, rain came through, washed all of this ash and debris down the creek, and Ben and I um, were visiting the property. The Versteegs were hosting us. They own the land that this creek is going through and have had an easement on their property with SRT for a while. And this is just a crazy event that happened. It was unexpected. Um, there were swimming holes that were one six feet deep and then they had maybe two inches uh, from the um, runoff material to the top of the water. Um, and one thing that we saw that was pretty incredible is on the banks of the stream, there were all, all these new tree seeds that 
I don't know. I mean, they were right on the top. So who's to say if they seeded and took off? Um, but regardless that it was an unexpected event, um, there was some new life that was seeding itself in some pretty um, delicious material and hopefully rooting and um, taking a form of its own. So that being said, that's a metaphor for my service. Um, I was working in vegetable, diversified vegetable agriculture. I moved out west for a grizzly core to ranch, heard a grizzly core, um, applied, came to SRT, never saw myself living in Visalia. I didn't even know where Visalia was. Um, but this program, you know, it gave me an opportunity to um, be adventurous and learn within a position that I'm now working in a similar position um, across the country. It just gave me an opportunity that I wasn't even expecting to have. And also to connect with different folks that are in a similar situation, um, doing the fellowship. Um, I still think back to this Mariposa Trails Day um, that a bunch of us went on and did a big burn pile and um, had a very goofy, fun time. Um, and yeah, I'm just so grateful. Um, I'm also grateful for the flexibility to leave and go for another opportunity. Um, I just, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm <laughs> having trouble putting into words um, just how grateful I am for the program, um, for SRT, for Ben, um, and to have met a bunch of you that are on this call today. So with that, I'll wrap it up. I believe that's my last slide. Um, Thank you. And if you have any questions, drop them in the chat or feel free to speak up.